Window management just got enhanced with a few tricks to keep things tidy and provide faster navigation. The new tab view allows you to access and manage all of your windows from the tray, not just the minimized ones. To enable this view, go to Session, Workspace Settings, and check the Window Tray box. All of your windows are now accessible from the tray. If you uncheck the box, only minimize windows will show. For now, we'll leave the box checked. To view a specific window from the tray, just click on the corresponding tab. To close a window from the tray, click on the X on the right of the corresponding tab. The control backtick shortcut now allows you to quickly switch between the different windows you have open. To access this view, Press and hold Control Backtick, then hit Backtick to cycle through your windows. You can release the Control key to open the highlighted window. Another way to access this view is to double click anywhere on the screen, or to click on the orange icon in the bottom left corner. See the number on it? It indicates the number of windows that you have open. Pretty cool. A third trick to manage your windows is to snap them to each side of the desktop. Like other programs, it easily lets you see two windows side by side, which is great when comparing or copying code or data. These resizable windows let you display several windows at the same time. You can also maximize a window by dragging it to the top, or minimize it by dragging it to the bottom. To activate this, Go to Workspace Settings and check the second box. Another feature that will make your life easier is the new Contact Sensitive Help shortcut. Let's say you have a trillion row spreadsheet window open. You want to know what the Visualize tab is about. You can now access help topics directly from that window. So, how do you access this view? Just use the key combination Control shift h and you'll see a screen with outlines appear. Hover over each outline to see the corresponding help description. If you click on one, a help window opens with related articles. And that's it. Remember, to use the context sensitive help feature, access it by using the key combination Control Shift H. Three steps and you're done. With V13's upload utility, you only need three clicks to upload files into 1010 data. Use the tool to upload delimited files such as CSV. XLSX or TSV files saved on your local machine or in 1010 Data's FTP. Let's look at how this new feature works. Drag and drop your file into 1010 Data's GUI. Click Start Upload, and our Autospec tool does the rest. The tool automatically interprets the structure of the file and configures it for you. Once the file is uploaded, your table is saved in your My Data folder and is ready for analysis. Open it in a TRS or Macro Language window, or access it with the Object Manager. Rename it by clicking on the I button. You can also access the Upload Utility by choosing Table Uploader in the Tools menu. Choose a file from an FTP or local directory. Click Start Upload. When the upload completes, open the file in a TRS or Macro Language window. Just like with drag and drop, the new table is saved in your My Data folder and is ready for analysis. 
Do you need to fine tune your data structure before uploading the file? The Edit Details option makes it easy. From the Tools menu, select the Table Uploader or drag and drop your file in the GUI. When the window pops up, click the Edit Details button. You'll see a visual interface with specification options, Structure, Headers, Fields, Destination, Spec XML, and Load. From the Structure panel, you can determine delimiters, end of record characters, and the number of skipped rows. To view skipped rows, click Raw View. To change multiple column names and labels, use the Headers panel, where you can make bulk changes. The first two columns display current names and labels. To bulk change them using information extracted from skipped rows, right-click on the column and choose Use this column as names. With the Fields panel, edit input and display formats and identify common errors, like invalid or empty cells. An invalid cell is one which does not match the input format. An empty cell is simply empty. The Destination panel lets you choose the title of your table and the path where your table should be saved. Specify a description and configure users and permissions. Use Spec XML if you want to change parameters, save the code for later use, load an existing XML spec file, or create an automated job. You can also edit the sample data size. When you're done, go to the Load panel. Check the box to log failures that may occur during the load to easily identify and fix errors from the TRS window. When you're ready to upload, click the Start Upload button and open it in a macro language or TRS window. Your table now has customized requirements and is ready for analysis. Link options have new names in V13. While past versions used these names, keep all rows, include matching rows, exclude matching rows, expand to include matching rows, we've switched it up a bit. Keep all rows is now link. This most commonly used link type finds matching rows in the foreign table and appends column information to matching rows in the base table. It takes into account only the first matching row for each matching value in the foreign table. Include matching rows is renamed link and select. This works similarly to link, except only matching rows are retained. Exclude matching rows is simplified to link and exclude. Here, we only retain rows in the base table that don't have a match in the foreign table. Expand to include all matching rows is now link and expand. This works like link, except all matching rows in the foreign table are taken into account. There are also three new link types in V13. Link and include is similar to link and select, as it retains only the rows in the base table that have a match in the foreign table. However, with link and include, column information is not appended to matching rows in the base table. The two other new link types are link closest match before and link closest match after. They both act as tolerant comparisons. They are useful when you don't know if the foreign table will contain an exact match and you want to match on the next closest value. For example, you have a sales table for a given store as your base table and want to compare it against that store's inventory volume on a specific date. You don't have inventory for each day, but instead have a table with inventory volumes for three dates. With these two links, you can match the date in the base table to either the next or previous closest date in the foreign table. For the next closest value, choose Link Closest Match Before, 
since the data in your base table comes before the one in your foreign table. For example, if we look at January 1st, 2016 in our base table, link closest match before returns an inventory of six items. If you want the previous closest value, choose link closest match after since the date in the base table comes after the one in the foreign table. For the same date, the link closest match after link returns an inventory of two items. With V13, the Visualization tab now interacts with the TRS timeline. You can choose from a bar chart, line plot, pie chart, scatter plot, and histogram, with each allowing for greater interaction. Let's say you want to find out the date that you sold the most products in 2017. We'll use the Sales Order 2017 table, which includes Order ID, Product Description, Quantity, Unit Price, and Order Date. To see this as a chart, go to the Visualize tab. You can use the search bar to select your column, or you can grab it directly from the list. We'll use Order Date and Quantity. To render your chart, drag the Order Date Biscuit to the X-axis drop area, and the Quantity Biscuit to the Y-axis drop area. Use the drop-down menu to change chart type. We'll use a bar chart. As big datasets are automatically sampled for performance reasons, choose No Sampling to see all data. Our chart shows the date with the highest quantity of products sold. To view the exact date, you will need to enable the zoom feature. Once enabled, you can zoom in to see that we sold the highest quantity of products on September 14, 2017. Another neat function of improved visualization is that you can perform operations like select and tabulate directly from the Visualize tab, making analysis easier. To perform a selection, drag the corresponding column to the filter drop zone. To tabulate, click on the grid icon. These operations appear in your timeline in the Analyze tab, making them easy to go back to and edit. There are also new layout options to choose from. You can customize your chart by clicking on the gear icon. Change the title by simply typing a new one. To render a grid with up to four graphs from the same data, change the layout dimensions. Once you're satisfied with your visualization, you can download it in a PNG format to add it to a PowerPoint or an Excel file. You can also copy and share the code with others in a macro language query or quick app, or add it to a dashboard. The scheduler is a great way to run a repeatable query and quickly share results with stakeholders. It is accessible through the admin menu and lets you create a job that runs a query and can deliver results monthly, weekly, daily, or even by the hour. You can then share these results with any recipient at your company. To edit or run jobs manually, go to the existing scheduled jobs tab, select the job from the list, and choose the appropriate action. With V13, you now have access to a new output option. In addition to delivering reports as comma-separated text files, PDFs, or Excel workbooks, results can now also be delivered as a 1010 data table. Results are not exported or downloaded, but published in a new 1010 data table. Upon selecting the None option, you'll receive an email notification when the table has been saved. With V13, you can stop a job in progress by going to the Existing Scheduled Jobs tab, selecting the job from the list, and clicking the Stop Job button. You can also view a job's creation date 
by selecting the View Raw Data button. If you are added as a recipient to a multi-job that might exceed your limit, you can now unsubscribe from that multi-job and resubscribe as needed. Another option is to run a job in debug mode, allowing you to get more information when a problematic job fails. Sometimes you need to quickly see a statistical overview of a given column, the number of unique counts, the lowest, highest, or average value, or the standard deviation. Quick Analysis menu options provide this information. Right-click a cell in a given column and select Quick Analysis of Quantity. Let's look at basic statistics first. This view now provides a variety of useful column statistics like count, mean, standard error of the mean, variance, quartiles, median, or mode. This window also displays a graphic representation of the main statistics through a vertical box and whiskers plot, which shows the lowest and highest value, the inner quartile range, the median, shown as a black line, and the mean, shown as a dotted line. The statistics and the chart are connected. If you make a change in one, it will update the other. You can interact with the plot to track down outliers. To get more information on a range of rows, highlight the corresponding region. This creates a second, more specific column with updated statistics and a separate box and whiskers chart. To zoom in, click the chart to the right. To zoom back out, click the chart on the left. To convert a find expression into a hard selection, open the find dialog above the grid and click the filter button. Let's go back to the quick analysis menu. The distribution view shows a binned histogram of the column you're interested in as a bar chart and a table of bins and counts. Binning can be customized from very coarse to very fine. By clicking on Normalize, the statistics change from counts to probabilities. As with the quick statistics display, drag over a horizontal region in the histogram to update statistics.